This is Twit. Good article uh, you wrote, uh, I thought, uh, Harry, I don't know if you heard it yet or not, about Apple's uh, announced new voice feature. This will be uh, in, in the fall, right, with uh, iOS 17. Uh, later this year, and pre later this presumably year. when the new OS updates come yeah. out, maybe. But really cool, uh, if you have ALS and as, you, as it progresses, it gets harder and harder to talk, people like Stephen Hawking start using machines that talk for them. Uh, Hawking quite famously. Now Apple is going to allow you to bank your voice. So if you have early stages ALS, you could bank your voice for the time when you'd have to use a speech machine, and it would sound like you. It comes pretty close from, from the samples I heard. Have you heard it? Uh, yes, I've heard a few samples. Um, they don't sound 100% like that person might. Um, they have a little bit of, of the... Uh, Typical stuff you associate with a synthesized voice, but they they don't sound like Siri or Alexa or the Google Assistant. They sound like a specific human being, which which is to a lot of these people who might face this really important. They they would much rather express themselves with their own voice, and um, that was the goal here. And there have been there have been ways to do this for a long time, but um, historically it could involve like a lot of training, which if you have ALS becomes even more of a challenge. Um, it used to be quite expensive. It, it's gotten cheaper. Um, but what Apple is doing is the next step in terms of making it completely accessible because it will be available as, as on this device, which a lot of people have. And it, people will be able to, to do the voice banking on an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac. I don't know. I, I presume Apple's doing this internally. There are uh, companies that do this already. I played with something from a company called Acapella, yes. and I had to read 215 phrases took me about half an hour and then it made my voice and and now uh, I don't have ALS but if I ever need it but it's kind of cool anyway this is this is uh, an example of my voice let's see make sure you have you have my sound right this is my voice oh it's not coming out of the coming out of the doohickey let me play it again Harry can you get me a can of soda this kind of sounds like me um, uh, they, from what I've heard of Apple's... It's better? Uh, if you did this with Apple's version, it would sound quite a bit more like you. Uh, and it, uh, Apple's takes 15 minutes of training, by the way, so... A lot um, faster, yeah. I am not surprised. So you need to package that up so you can be the voice that people can put on their uh, car directions. Yeah, actually, I did that back when... Back in the day, Tom... <laughs> was it Tom Tom? I think Tom Tom allowed you to record your voice. And now, actually, I have a Waze voice that's me. In fact... <laughs> I hadn't used Waze in a while. <laughs> I think this needs to be a Twit TV uh, subscription benefit. I, I, could, I could put it in the club Twit. Uh, uh, I hadn't used Waze in a while. I recorded this maybe five or six years ago. And uh, we were worried about traffic, so I turned on Waze and it said, turn left at the next, and it was me. And I said, that sounds like me, Lisa. <laughs> and she said, it is you, you <laughs> nitwit. <laughs> speaking, speaking of that sort of thing, I've, I've heard some people who have been concerned that Apple's technology could be used for nefarious purposes. Ah, could it? Such as stealing somebody else's voice. Yes. And I think they have done a lot of thinking about that. And, and there are a bunch of existing services, which even though Apple's is not available yet now, people are already using for questionable purposes. Um, app, with Apple's, um, the person who wants to do this has to do the training using these random um, Is it on phrases. the phone? Does it stay on the phone? It, and in, in fact, you can just leave it on the phone if you want, and it never gets uploaded to the cloud at all. I mean, probably the, the single most interesting thing Apple has done technologically is that they've crunched this down into a form where the, tra where the crunching of your voice can be done on the device. You can, you can upload it to um, iCloud, which you probably would want to do because when you're, when you're doing this, it might be, it would be for later use, possibly using devices you don't own yet. But um, even on iCloud, it's encrypted. And I think it just, it does seem like it would be tough for somebody to essentially steal your voice using this technology. It re really does seem like it's, it's under the control of, of the person who is banking their voice. Using Apple stuff, uh, because you have to read specific phrases, they're random. So you couldn't take all the recordings of me, for instance, and do this. You couldn't do that. It seems like it would be, um, extremely difficult to impossible to like take rec to record Leo's voice and then train it and create a Leo voice without Leo being aware you were doing that right which is certainly something a reasonable thing to be concerned There's, about with some of these technologies there are uh, AI companies 11 labs is one that will do this from uh, arbitrary samples yes but in order for us to do this uh, Anthony had to come in and have me read a statement said I am Leo Laporte and I give permission for this 
to be done. But now he's got my voice and he's doing all sorts of stuff with, I think, our promos have my, my synthesized voice. That was Descripts. Oh, that was, that wasn't, that was who? Descripts. Descripts. Did, does 11 AI ask? No, 11 AI says just give me some samples. Well, yeah, I mean, they say, like, you, you assume responsibility for, like, it's all on you if uh, something goes wrong. But, but any bad actor could then make my voice, right? Yeah. See, I worry. I, I guess I shouldn't. I've told, though, as a result, uh, all my family and friends, uh, we need a, you know, a secret word. When I, if I call you saying I've been kidnapped, please send a million dollars ransom to this address, I need to have the secret word. That's all, that stuff like that is already happening. Uh, yeah. Based on... On technology, uh, yeah. Larry Maggot got uh, almost got suckered by somebody pretending to be his wife. Uh, he wrote the story uh, on his website. Um, yeah, I, I feel very nervous. And anybody who's in the public uh, domain, where they're or and for some reason or other, they're vo even you guys. Just because you're on this show, there's enough samples of your voices now. Sorry, tell your loved yeah. ones. I should have a lot more fame and fortune as a consequence of this for the amount of risk it's putting. I with. agree. We're going to have to start paying people a lot more to come on the show. Yeah. You know, the problem with journalism is... You're in the public eye, but you make no money. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've said that for a long time. Yeah. It's not good. Hey, I know you're super busy, so I won't keep you long, but I wanted to tell you about a show here on the Twit Network called Tech News Weekly. You are a busy person, and uh, during your week, you may want to learn about all the tech news that's fit to, well, say, not print, here on Twit. It's Tech News Weekly. Uh, me, Micah Sargent, my co-host, Jason Howell. We talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news, and we love the opportunity to get to share those stories with you and let the people who wrote them or broke them share them as well. So I hope you check it out every Thursday right here on Twit.